if I keep it lighter like this um, versus if I was to go extremely dark on it, it may come through onto the fabric because this gets run underwater when I'm all done and this mm -hmm. dissolves away. And so if it's too strong of marks, it could come off onto the Okay, Organs interesting. Up. And yeah. so this kind of little thing sometimes <laughs> just to we discover, discover, right? Like, exactly. Everyone is trying. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We are in the studio of Karen Gustafsson, one of the Kira artists who are a part of the international group of artists for at the King, of July. for the month of July in, at Kingsbury international residence in arts yeah. here yes. at, in St. Andrews yes. um, <laughs> in Canada. Uh, so this is a very special video <laughs> because yes. it's like a it's like a studio visit. It is. Yes. I'm very excited to have Kalina in my studio as well and uh, share yeah. this incredible time with her as a resident artist at Kira. So all right, super excited <laughs> to take you on the tour. I reside in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and the project that I'm working on here is uh, drawings from an ancient herbal. Uh, they're actually paintings from 512 AD, and I'm looking at recreating uh, parts of this ancient herbal from the Vienna Dioscorides. Uh, Herbal that was, was that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think so, it's quite a mysterious um, title it for is. many of us. It <laughs> is, it is. So it is uh, the oldest uh, fully um, still intact manuscript mm -hmm. of uh, this, um, the Vienna Dioscorides. And there were many different versions of this. Uh, this part, these? Yeah. yeah. yeah so. That can explain a lot. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. So for this uh, book, it's pretty amazing. So it, uh, the text itself was the main pharmacological text for 1,500 years. Mm -hmm. And this is the oldest surviving one. And it's created into um, all of these uh, different books that were written. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it describes all the medicinal plants that are there and so with this I created this you know I went and researched where all of these plants were in the English translation of it mm -hmm. versus uh, the original book because he had it uh, broken into uh, these different books or chapters and uh, from this point on, they really uh, started switching it and alphabetizing it. So I wanted to see how he grouped the plants mm -hmm. and what their properties were. So, so I really love that this is actually this is what you did. You kind of like brought everything into some type of your way of organizing information. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we're seeing, you know, like you create a sort of table here and, and you right. uh, juxtapose um, the name um, of the medicinal herb and uh, with botanical name. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is just so systematic, so beautiful <laughs> put together. <laughs> And then you had yeah. image. Is it original image illustration from, it from that book? It is. So these okay. are from the 512 AD, and they're mm -hmm. paintings in this manuscript. And they're considered, so it's the oldest surviving manuscript that's still put together. It's considered to be the most beautiful. And part mm -hmm. of it, um, for my interest in it too, is all these plants seem like they're alive, and they're moving and living. and for Byzantine times, when things were very symbolic, they're very lifelike and have this energy which is unique to that. And so, then also, yeah, so that's that. So Maybe we see really here, like yes. So the um, version, yeah, of it. And then oh, they're this on is really wonderful. Yes. Yeah, and then they're stitched and depending on how strong the light is, they create a secondary shadow and then mm -hmm. they also float and move with you so they kind of have a you know a life of their own as well so that's part of it commemorating it 
bringing it back, um, that idea of uh, ancient manuscripts where people copied and brought things mm -hmm. forward, as well as for myself, um, this is free motion embroidery or just drawing the thread on the sewing machine. Mm -hmm. And as that aspect of it, I love the idea of embroidery samplers um, that individuals, uh, women would create and like, collect um, their own you know, knowledge of. And so these, this is my sampling. So this is again a way of preserving, another way of preserving. Oh, another way of preserving. These beautiful um, you know, documents, manuscripts, right. like a culture or document of, of humanity, but also another aspect is a uh, you know, beautiful metaphor of preserving nature. Preserving yes. nature and... And, and uh, our, probably our dialogue with nature or like our understanding. Our of, understanding and our relationship to yes. it. That we used to, I mean these, we visited them as these were medicinal plants and this knowledge. And if you think of it that this text, this basis had many, many different uh, copies and recensions, but it was a main, again, pharmacological text for 1,500 years. Um, and mm -hmm. for us, I think sometimes I feel like we're starting to reconsider what plants can do for us medicinally. And as part of that, you know, bringing that forward again, looking at it and, and seeing also um, the incredible diversity and the importance in diversity of what each individual plant brings as well as, you know, what each individual, and I think of these as plant portraits, you know? They're, oh, they're, like they're individuals, um, and we all contribute to the whole, so. So this incredible delicacy uh, within the materials that you're using, um, it's hard not to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it has this you beautiful, it has a very beautiful tactile quality. Oh, this is very, uh, it's beautifully trans transparent almost. Yes. Um, so the translucency trans play uh, of shadows, um, I mean, there's a lot of layers actually, but yes. those layers are so delicate, almost ephemeral mm -hmm. or uh, immaterial. Right. That's yes. what, um, you know, comes to my mind. So these are almost ghosts, but you're still exactly. like, kind of trying to capture those, like, make them still um, be present. solid. Yes. Yeah, exactly. and, and so this yeah. is like quite, quite beautiful way of um, uh, expressing um, the concept through through the use of very specific materials right. um, yeah. and media. So uh, let's talk now a little bit a little bit more about processes sure, and yeah. media that are involved. So these are definitely drawings and you think yes, of them as drawings. I do, I do. And and it's not like you're um um, you're not really just an artist who is doing embroidery no. or sewing. It's, mm -hmm. it's just one of the mediums, uh, mediums that you're using just because it really uh, allows you to express right. what you're trying to express, uh, you know, uh, or maybe successfully expresses your concepts. Yes, right, definitely. And, you know, prior to this, I worked with ink drawings for a long time too. And I think part of it is, you know, through this, uh, because tonal structure is how we understand form and shape. And so for myself, it's about trying to figure out how to create these forms and you have control, but you don't have control. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that part of it. Um, and then the delicacy of it that you can get and Again, just another way instead of using, like, say, Duralar or, you know, some kind of translucent paper that you're able to, uh, you know, explore the form in this way. And, you know, uh, with the organza, you know, it's very, um, it has a sheen and a quality to mm -hmm. it. And it, it moves very differently than paper would, too, you know, and that, that part and that hemming of it and using... You know as a support over it a dissolvable fabric mm -hmm. so once I'm done as you can see in this one that I've begun um, 
you know, I do a drawing that's faithful to the plant structure, but I decided early on this wasn't about representing these botanically. It was about thinking about their textures and their structure and just kind of riffing how I decide that I want to do that and think about trying to keep that sense of movement and mm -hmm. life and dimension alive. And so sometimes I will play around with figuring out what I want to do on it. Um, and sometimes I just go for it. And, you know, you have to embrace marks that you don't want necessarily and then figure out how to make them work which i also uh, I appreciate love that approach exactly that's so. a very creative and very kind of natural artist way of working through the materials right yeah and is. and a, a really great way at um coming across some happy accidents <laughs> exactly and i felt like i needed to i, I just really love drawing and you know, I worked with the Micron pens on watercolor paper for mm -hmm. several years, and I needed I needed a challenge, but I also really wanted to. Um, you, I, I I wanted that. It took me a while to figure out these exact materials to get mm -hmm. what I wanted from it. So um, mm -hmm. I bumped around for months trying to figure it out until I finally was able to, to get it and then even to figure out how to finish the drawings. So mm -hmm. the drawings um, are held in the hoop, the embroidery hoop, so they mm -hmm. stay tight and the dissolvable fabric it, beyond um, being able to draw on it, then it also acts as a stabilizer to help it so that it doesn't bunch up or here there's just when I change out my thread or just want to play I do this wrinkled, and you can see yeah. how much more wrinkled it is when mm -hmm. it's not held in the hoop. But to have it large enough, um, you, I can't finish it until afterwards, which is also, you know, um, it's, I enjoy the process, but it also adds a bit of tension because you've finished this drawing and then you have to hem it. <laughs> you know? I'm really present with that. So yeah. like this is one, you know, unfinished here. Um, and so uh, what I do is I cut strips down of that dissolvable fabric, but mm -hmm. they have a version that has a sticky back to it so that I'm able to put strips. So like I'll cut strips like this and then I put them, okay. you know, um, down and I put them around the edges and then I trim that off. And then I use a different uh, roll pin uh, foot and then I roll him it and then also run it under water for quite a while okay, to dissolve Okay, to give it. that nice finish. To have the finish of it, yeah. yeah. And again, I, you know, sampled different versions of that too, if I, how I wanted to have it finished. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's not, um, it kind of varies on it, but then I played around with how much I want to also uh, put. So what I do is, you know, for the page in the actual uh, manuscript, I reference the page and it's like, so 147 verso versus, you know, recto mm -hmm. of the different page. And then what's great with this small stamp on it it's a stamp, yeah. yeah. I was wondering what's It doesn't and... give a cast shadow, which I think is very interesting too. Okay, so, so and, and there was a very um, important decision not to embroider it. Right, that not time. to embroider yes. it, not to put the name down of it, to sign it, um, mm -hmm. anything like that, because it's just about these. Um, but yet I wanted people, if they really wanted to find out what plant it was, they could find out what plant it was beyond just a label also. Okay. Well, this is, this is incredibly um, rich and uh, in, in history and um, um, in, in terms of um, the concept behind the work. Thank you. Incredibly beautiful and powerful project that you're involved with. Well, thank you so and much. And I'm so lucky. Thank you so much for oh. having me over, having us over. Yes. <laughs> wow, I feel very this is, to this is a, a really great privilege to uh, be in this residency with such great artists as Carl. <laughs> and with Kalina, which is <laughs> awesome also. So 
Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you.